In the first video of this three-part series, we took a look at the basics of programming within Max for Life and created a very simple device which essentially just controlled the volume. Now, in this second video, we're going to create a synthesizer, and we're going to do that by making use of a Max instrument. So I'm going to click on the default Max instrument and drop it onto a MIDI track, and then I'm going to click on the Edit button. And Max will now open up. And... Let's just make this a bit bigger here. So we can see already two objects are provided for us, a MIDI in object and a plug out tilde object. So to start off with, I'm going to create the part of the patch which actually creates the sound. And I'm going to move this plug out over here. So this object, as we saw in the first video, basically allows us to get audio out of the Max for Live device. To start with then, I'm going to create an object which creates or generates sound and to create a new object within a Max or Max for Live you can hit button N for new object and I'm going to type in saw tilde. Uh, the tilde, this looks like a kind of flattened sine wave, basically indicates that this object works at an audio rate, it's a signal rather than just data. Okay, we'll kind of recap on that in a minute. What I'm also going to do is connect this through a fader. So another way to create a new object, if you're not sure of uh, how to name them, is to open up this sidebar. And then what we can do is just scroll down here. I'm going to find live uh, objects here. So I'm going to choose live gain. And we're just going to connect it in like this. Okay, it's just a mono output, this saw. And uh, if I want to see the whole of that live gain object within my window, so remember this horizontal line here indicates where the device stops on the uh, vertical axis. So here's my saw tilde going into my fader, and then that goes to the plug out object. Uh, I can't hear anything yet because I need to send it a frequency. So to set the frequencies, there's a couple of different ways. If I just turn down this slider to start with, and then what I'm going to do is double click, hit the right arrow and then hit space. Okay. And then I'm going to type in, let's say hundred Hertz, type in hundred. As soon as I do that, you see there's an audio signal present. You'll be able to hear a sawtooth wave at 100 hertz. Obviously, that's not a great deal of use when we want to change it. So a much easier way to change the frequency is just to create a number box. I'm going to create a float, so hit button F, and then just connect up the output from that float into the inlet of the saw tilde. Now what you'll notice is this one here has got a black line in comparison to the kind of greenish yellow stripy line going from the saw tilde box into the fader. And this indicates that there's different types of data going down. So this black line indicates just data, it's numbers, it could be symbols, whereas the information coming out here is basically an audio signal going at an audio rate. Okay, so anyway, let's lock the patch. I'm gonna hold down command key click in the gray area and now I can just move that number up to whatever frequency so if I type in 1000 what we're hearing is a sawtooth at 1000 Hertz or 1 kilohertz okay the problem of using this simple float box is you can't automate it or control it from within Ableton so another way to use numbers is to make use of the live.num box and because it's from this live tab you'll find Ableton will recognize it and you'll be able to automate it very easily so let's just connect this up okay and then I'm going to get the inspector by right clicking or control clicking choose inspector and now in the sidebar we get all the information about this number box here so long name let's call this frequency and then short name we're going to call this freak and in terms of range here let's set it between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz unit style hertz okay so the 20 to 20,000 is human hearing range we could actually reduce the 20,000 but that'll be fine for now and unit style hertz okay so let's come over to the patch lock the patch so hold down command key click in the gray area 
and we can now move through the frequencies. Now you can hear it kind of steps. We can give it a finer control by holding down the command key or we can just reduce that range down. So let's select it, come back to the range here. And actually I'm just going to type in 5,000. And we can now change the frequency of that sawtooth. Let's turn it down. Brilliant. So what we want to do now is to actually control that using a MIDI keyboard. OK, the default object which is provided in the Max instrument is MIDI in. I'm actually going to use a different object, uh, Note in. So again, we could create this object by hitting button N and typing in Note in. Or you can make use of the sidebar here. And uh, we could scroll down to our MIDI objects and look for Note in and then drag it over here. Note in, there we go. So note in object has three outlets. If you're not sure what these outlets do, then what we could do is connect up three number boxes and see what happens when we play the keyboard. So move a the mouse there, hit button I, move a mouse here, press button I, and then over here and press button I. And that's gonna connect my output or outlets from this note in object into those boxes. Good, so if I play my MIDI keyboard, I'm playing middle C there, and you can see the first value here, it says 60, okay, and that's the note number for middle C. The second value here is velocity, okay, so how hard I press the keyboard, so that's fairly hard, that's very hard, and this is softly. When I let go of the key, then it goes to zero, indicating that it's sending a note off message. Uh, and then the final value here is channel. If you're not sure about MIDI messages, then uh, again, you can find out more information by right clicking or control clicking and choosing uh, note in help. And again, that kind of goes through what this type of uh, information comes out of the note in object. We're more familiar seeing the pitch data as a note name and octave number. So we can display the information like that. If I just create a live.num box and then connect it up. And then again, let's get the inspector. So come over to the sidebar, choose inspector. And here is pitch. So these are just names which would appear in the automation lane and come further down unit style here and we're going to choose MIDI. Okay, so now if I play a MIDI note, C3, which is number 60, but we can see it's C3 or D3 or E3 or whatever note I'm actually playing. So Max allows you to display your info in a number of different ways. And again, you can see there's black lines indicating it's just data just traveling down these patch cords. Brilliant, so what we wanna do then is we want to connect up our note in, our MIDI data to this oscillator so we can then change the pitch of it or frequency. So there's a relationship between pitch and frequency, but it essentially involves quite a lot of maths. Luckily for us, there's a whole load of different objects which make our lives much easier and will handle all this maths for us. So to convert from MIDI to frequency, we're just going to create a new object. And this object is called MTOV. And if I just connect this up, we're going to see exactly what it does. If I want to make my patch cords segmented so they're nice and neat like that, I'll just hold down the shift key and then click uh, from the outlet to the inlet. And I can now, each time I click, it creates a corner. So if I now play my MIDI keyboard, you can see if I play concert pitch A, which is A3, that indicates it's 440, down the octave 220, etc. So again, if we can hear this, just turn up this slider. And we can now hear the pitch being modulated by the keyboard. The problem is the sound is constant. So in the next video, we'll look at sorting that out as well as developing the patch further. Every two weeks in the course, uh, an assignment is set. So once I've done my assignment, which is essentially a track, I upload it for my tutor to download. And he sends me back a DVR, which is a direct video response. It's a video produced by your tutor 
um, that is sent to you personally every couple of weeks while you're, you're studying, giving you immediate feedback on your production. It's something that enables the students to have a one-to-one -one connection with their tutor. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. And I think this kind of steel can sound is brilliant. I mean, that's, that's a real kind of hook of the track, this. Maybe let's just try uh, recording something in. The response that the tutor gives is completely tailored to the student's style of music or the level that they're at as well. So it might be nice to spice up this drum track by adding a delay and you can see I've put one here in the return of the drum rack and uh, if we just apply that to the clap now, you see it has a really nice effect. If you want to check out the whole range of online courses, go to pointblankonline.net. Thank you.